How do you upgrade any Spring Boot application? Well, if you've been on a team for anything longer than a year, you've probably already come up against this challenge. And if not, it's very likely just around the corner. I've been coding for over a decade and a half at this point, and in this video, I'm going to show you my framework for upgrading any Spring Boot application. In fact, this is the very same framework that I used to upgrade a real Spring Boot application in a recent members workshop. I'll link to membership down below if that's something that would interest you. So let's now talk about the framework. It comes in four phases. The first is validate, then fortify, then language, and then framework. So even though the low level specifics of each upgrade will vary, these phases do not, and they should be completed in this exact order. So first up, we have the validate phase, and it's the goal of this phase to find a known good state. So what do we mean by known good state? Well, this is when the code of the application compiles. This is when all of the tests pass. The application runs, and this is all using the original versions that the application was written with. We haven't upgraded anything yet. So by that, I mean exactly the same version of Java and exactly the same versions in the pom.xml file, or Gradle if you're using that. So if you can't compile your code or if your tests don't pass, now is the time to fix it. We do this now because as soon as we start upgrading things, yes, we're making the application better, but we're also introducing new ways in which the project could break. So there is literally no easier time to get the project into a known good state than right now. So that's exactly what we do. Next up, we have the fortify phase. Once we found a known good state, we wanna keep it that way. So we're going to fortify our app. So we fortify our application in two main ways. The first one is everybody's favorite and that's by increasing test coverage. All jokes aside, tests serve an important purpose. They give us confidence that our application is working as expected. They literally tell us if anything breaks and that's exactly what we want when we upgrade our application. At a minimum, you wanna hit the main features and the high risk areas of your application. I've written here 85% plus, so 85% line coverage or above as a general rule of thumb. 85% is a bit arbitrary, but it's a good enough value that I've seen work in the past. Does your team use a specific line coverage goal? Let me know in the comments below. So that's the first way. And the second way is to remove magic features. So whereas tests tell us when something goes wrong, removing magic features reduces the number of ways in which the application can go wrong in the first place. So I classify a magic feature as any time the application behaves differently based on its internal understanding. So as an example, Hibernate Auto DDL, the feature in which the database schema is created based on the JPA entities, that would be an example of a magic feature because the schema could be ever so slightly different depending on the internal understanding of those JPA entities. So now would be the time to remove Hibernate Auto DDL in the application and introduce a flyaway migration which locks down the schema that's going to be used. Now we have our first big change and that's upgrading the version of Java that our project uses. So something important to note at this stage is that when we upgrade Java, we only upgrade Java. We do one thing at a time in order to keep the number of ways in which our application can break to a minimum. So how do we upgrade Java? While most JDK providers provide a migration guide, which will give you the steps that you need to follow to go from one version of Java to the next. So as an example, let's hypothetically upgrade an application from JDK 17 to JDK 21. What would those steps look like? Well, at a high level, we would first need to install JDK 21 on our system. And you would do this by following the JDK provider's instructions on how to install it on your particular operating system. So once JDK 21 is installed, we would then need to specify Java 21 in the pom.xml in the case of using Maven or otherwise update your Gradle configuration. And this means that our build will then target Java 21. That will be the version of the bytecode that will be targeted and we have access to all of those language features. And at a high level, these are the two steps that you need to do. Obviously the migration guide may detail some additional steps that you need to do for the particular versions that you're using. Now you might be wondering why we are upgrading Java, the language before the framework, Spring Boot. Well, typically Spring Boot, the framework, does a great job at adding support for new Java versions as they come out, especially the long-term support releases. So typically by upgrading Java, the framework should, not guaranteed, but should already support that version of Java. So with that done, let's now move on to the last phase. So in the last phase, we finally upgrade Spring Boot, our framework. So again, migration guides and migration notes do exist for this, but this is generally what you would need to do. 
Again, in the case of Maven, you would simply need to update the version of your parent POM, specifying the new version of Spring Boot that you want to use. So you get to use that new version of Spring Boot that you specified and all the latest versions that come along with that version of Spring Boot. That's not to say that everything will just work, however. When we bring down a new version of Spring Boot, we're bringing down new versions of dependencies. And with that comes changes to the way in which our application works. And that could result in bugs that we then need to fix. We certainly needed to do so in the workshop. But the good news is with that test coverage in place and with those magic features removed, you should be able to get back to that known good state fairly efficiently. At this point, you should have an upgraded working Spring Boot project. But what if you don't have a project yet to upgrade? Well, why not build one by following this video right here.